questions to make them as brief as possible and those uh, who answer to also just address the question and move on otherwise we won't have much time to discuss. I'd like to introduce, because I just saw him, the uh, Professor Blackmore from the Department of Spanish and Portuguese, um, chair of the department for a few more months. So, any questions? You had a. Would you like to begin now? Yeah? Could you talk a little louder? Uh, we should have a... Can you, can everybody hear them without being mic'd? one of the most important and maybe one of the most dangerous things or kind of information mining that you have nowadays. So, as I, as I said, uh, at this very moment we are being filmed and someone may... Added to a database. Added, we are being added to a database and someone may, may ask, okay, Jose Claudio, okay, Mary, okay, uh, uh, Rath TV, and Soon they'll have us in their database. It's so interesting that Google stock yesterday for the first time over a thousand dollars of stock. <laughs> uh, if I can ask a question because the connection database, uh, you said that the humanities uh, don't use are not using the database very much. I don't know if it was a criticism or just a statement of fact. Uh, do you think that uh, if the humanities should be using it more? Uh, the humanities are I, I don't think it's not a criticism. Uh, it's uh, I'm just uh, a statement. Um, uh, I think the humanities have difficulties uh, when dealing with that case because we are much tried by uh, a kind of interpretation of facts or of close reading and of close so of texts. And so it's, it's another way of seeing. But uh, I think that the whole context uh, is always demanding us to adapt ourselves or well, our mode of production of knowledge to that basis. Excuse me. Let me add. Sure. Um, this is uh, essentially from the standpoint of uh, political administration use and misuse of uh, our information, our data uh, uh, in online. Uh, since uh, September 11, 2001, in the United States, this has become a serious uh, issue, a very contentious issue. Uh, the concept of data mining 
And uh, recently, uh, certainly you have heard about uh, Snowden, the former contractor of the National Security Agency, the most secretive, what used to be the most secretive agency in the world. Uh, the, the, the rule of thumb in the United States is that there is nothing secret anymore. Every time we buy something anywhere, we are exposing ourselves to the internet. Every time we access the internet, one way or the other, we are, or, you know, we sometimes wonder why and how a remote uh, uh, marketplace could call us or send us an email and sell us this, sell us that. It's because, as you said, if you buy a comic book today, uh, they know you like comic books. Maybe you only bought it for a, uh, a cousin somewhere in, in somewhere, uh, but they follow you. So we are followed all over, and governments are also following us, and uh, there is nothing secret. And finally, uh, this is, has been a warning, and unfortunately, younger people, teenagers and others, they don't understand it. They go to Facebook, they post all kinds of of, of the pictures, and as they grow older, once they go and they apply for a respectable job, the tattoos on the neck and everything, I have nothing against that, I'm just stating the fact, and they go there, a, 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 a picture, a questionable picture that was posted about uh, 7, 15 years ago, followed them all the way to the interview table. And that's to say, the world is completely an open book now, as far as uh, I see. Um, well, this is actually following up on what you're saying, and I would stress to all of you, um, and I just to hear your views on, um, or your attitudes, or if you've sort of looked into the idea of, um, for example, in Satoshi, your presentation, this idea of how the political elite becomes destabilized in cyberspace and life world, or for example, Mary, how you talk about um, there's there's official media and unofficial media, and the gap between there, and some way to kind of work your way between the two. And uh, Mohammed, you're talking about. Um, I, I found it really interesting what you're commenting about the Syrian rebels, how how the there was a, a, a this sort of news media intervention which came in and talked about how they were responsible for the chemical attacks. Um, and this sort of disinformation um, was quickly kind of assimilated in the, 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 the more um, established news media as, you know, this is, this is not something that's um, probable. And also, <laughs> sorry, in, in Jose, Jose's presentation, this idea of databases becoming so massive that, that you become further away from the truth. Like, how can you, is there any kind of way through um, in your own research that you've sort of started to think about how to fill in those gaps that you kind of have talked about in some ways? So our interpretation is becoming intersubjective. 
So if we are going to do a better subject matter interpretation, the entire new world which is presented by the cyberspace can be negotiated in this physical space. This physical space and cyberspace can be reconnected together so that it's not only becoming an extension of identity, it can become the extension of reality as well. So that's, that's how in my study, what I am talking about, political elements, like in so what used to happen, that all the time political elements used to find out this critical mass in physical space. And same exactly happening that because of this emergence of new critical mass through this new media, this extension of identity and negotiating with this critical mass is happening in this cyberspace as well. So that's how we may be least the gap of intersubjectivity both in physical and personal space. Okay. Um, the gap the gap that is between the mainstream and the social media. And this now the social media is like a revelation in Brazil. And um, it brings like um, television in Brazil is something very present and very strong. And with this now um, it's a new comprehension about the, the the situation. So this gap, I think, uh, is, is very distinct. Right? You can see the social media and the, the mainstream, and this gap is now uh, getting over. Like the mainstream media has to uh, rethink what's going on, and like cannot stay in the helicopters making the, the, the coverage uh, anymore. It has to come down and be, you know, um, close uh, to what is happening. So in this point, I don't understand. Well, we have the times the mainstream media mimicking and pressing out this new media and it seems that often Here's go to our blog. Uh, we have more information. Uh, that a lot of it seems to me they're just dressing up uh, because they have to. I don't know. No, I didn't know I'm just adding to your question. As this new media is dressing up, the traditional media is dressing up with this new media. Same way, social media, new media is also appreciating the traditional media. See, this we you know we have seen in New York Times, and that's what we are saying. It is this uh, CNN TV is also present in the taking of this television channel with the presentation of New York Times article. They also related themselves to the conventional media. So for me, there is a very broad gap. It's not so distinct gap, but in the chat instead. That means no, we are saying that after a story, see these are five blocks, these are two YouTube videos that the traditional media is saying. At the same time, new media is connecting to so, so, um, traditional media to validate themselves. That seems no, what we are we think this YouTube video, but we have circulated. Also New York Times reported the same way. So the for me there, there is very it's not block gap between social media and it's not distinct and it's always you know, the negotiation between the two. Well, I know that a lot of people say that these entities are popping up like Corpus and I forget the other two sort of not not traditional journalistic um, institutions, but they collect and then disseminate. <coughs> Media and then sell it to the mainstream media. Is that altogether an idea? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I think this has been an attempt on the part of uh, some of the professional news organizations at harnessing in a rather heightened professional way the information received from social media. Uh, my take on that is this cosmetic uh, change that some professional media, are, or, or at least mainstream media, are doing, uh, working into social media and trying this kind of cosmetic 
uh, accommodation of it is not enough. Uh, in my view, my argument is that uh, professional media needs to develop a new standard of professionalization of not only the correct treatment and broadcasting of information, not just to use somebody to, to curate videos and pictures from Syria from different individuals and say, okay, we, we believe this angle. They have very detailed ways of, uh, of looking at that and saying, yes, this is authentic, this is not authentic. But it is still marketing. It is still more commercial than professional. And I do believe, as my predecessor said, social media, it's nothing new. It's the technological aspect of it. The, end, the, the networking, the instantaneous networking of social media. In fact, it is, I believe, an elevation of emotionally based information and rumors that existed from uh, practically, uh, uh, you know, thousands of years ago. You know, what we say behind uh, closed doors or in our privacy and so on. That's what is transpiring now. And I think the professional media should not find that uh, insurmountable because the same way journalists would have 15, 20 years ago uh, embedded themselves in Syria, interviewing individuals, taking pictures themselves, and coming, decorticating those, uh, that material before presenting it on the, on the screen of television, they should invent or reinvent themselves to know how to deal what is with what is coming to them. So I believe that is really the biggest challenge of uh, new age and for uh, uh, professional information news uh, organizations.